here in the Tech Showcase, but not before we had another exciting morning and afternoon here uh, in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I mean, I'll start by saying, uh, you know, none other than Secretary Granholm, our DOE Secretary, Department of Energy Secretary, visited our upheat booth, and Lana Osuski and Laura Dodd got a chance to interact with her and talk all about their project. We'll have some highlights from that. The other big highlight uh, from today was a decarbonization and industry panel that our Chief Propulsion Engineer, Paul Glazer, participated in. He's joining me now. Paul, tell us some of the key takeaways from the panel, and also we made some exciting hydrogen news today as well. Yeah, let's start with the panel. That was uh, earlier this morning. We were able to sit on a panel with representatives from uh, BASF, the chemical company, a tech incubator who's actually also the moderator, as well as the Secretary of State's uh, office who's talking about climate change and how we're managing that with our international partners. We've got a lot of great questions about what GE is doing to decarbonize now for ourselves and for our customers. And I think one of the biggest takeaways I had in terms of what was of interest was a bit of probing questioning on what is the why of decarbonization and what is the how of decarbonization. So we're always happy to talk about the fact that our customers expect low carbon efficient solutions for the future of flight and the energy transition, but also the how are we going to get there? What are the technologies we need to mature either by ourselves or with partners and collaborative uh, exercises, demonstrations, and working with young companies was one of the themes that we came out of that industry panel. The need for GE to work with companies and government institutions on policy and technology going forward. But as Todd also talked, the other exciting thing that happened today, we were happy to announce more publicly two major new awards from the Department of Energy on the theme of hydrogen combustion. One is from GE Power, a series of tests and a series of design exercises to get us to 100% F-class combustion for a stationary gas turbine. But we also talked about some new work at the research center that's going to leverage some interesting new combustion technologies and geometries to also manage reactive fuels and extract a step change in efficiency out of the same fuels, including hydrogen. We're charged up about these. We can't wait to get them under award. It's going to be top notch. Paul, well, thanks. Yeah, I'll tell you, just an exciting uh, morning and afternoon. The hydrogen news, decarbonization, Secretary Granholm, uh, it just uh, gets better and better with each uh, day of the conference. And now let's get into our next three videos, our next project booths, our ARPA E in three. I'm Bruce Pipe from Upper National Lab. Oh great, hi Bruce, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, right. what are you doing? Alright, so, uh, we are creating an additively enabled heat exchanger and to try and give you kind of the, the big picture view, there's a lot of industrial processes, um, aviation systems, waste heat recovery, fusion, um, that all run more efficiently if you can run them at higher temperatures and pressures. But when you generate a lot of energy, you also lose a lot of energy. All of these systems are limited in, in their overall system efficiency by the release capable components. So things like heat exchangers that have material limits, performance limits, that's forcing us to leave performance and efficiency on the table. And we don't like to do that. So ARPA E came to us and challenged us to create an additive or a unique heat exchanger design uh, that can not only produce a, a high degree of efficiency at the component level, but is capable of running at high temperatures and pressures to boost the overall system efficiency. So we have come up uh, with our very highly talented multidisciplinary team with this replicating cell type structure that we call the triplicating unit cell uh, that allows us to pack a lot of heat transfer surface area into a very compact volume. Uh, so that makes it very powerful from a uh, heat transfer performance perspective. And the fact that we're continuously disrupting the flow through many small channels enables us to keep the pressure down low. Uh, so we're very excited about this design and Laura's going to tell you about um, why we do. <laughs> i tell you why it's hard. <laughs> so, the, so this is really interesting because so Anna said that we make this via additive manufacturing. There's really no other way to make this type of design and get the performance. But when you move from conventional manufacturing to additive manufacturing, you bring in a lot of new challenges. So one of the things that we've done on this program is we've designed a high temperature super alloy, so the metal, used to make it specifically for additive manufacturing. So you would design it. Yeah, a new alloy, uh -huh. meant to have a very big process window in additive so that we could actually industrialize something that looks like this. That said, when we design the new alloy, we need to understand how it performs in really harsh environments. So Bruce is on the team from Oak Ridge National Lab doing corrosion testing mm -hmm. as part of that. I'd say maybe the second really big so challenge. How's the, yeah. How is it going? How's the test? Oh, very good, actually. Really? We're, yeah. we're actually showing that we're meeting the performance 
targets for RV, which is 900C capability and 40,000 hour life. Which is really exciting, we're really proud of that. At 3,600 PSI, which I, I believe is the equivalent to being something like 2,000 feet from So, wow. I am Rogier Blom. I'm Senior Principal Engineer at the Controls and Optimization Organization at GE Research. My project is on floating offshore wind. Uh, offshore wind is a really important uh, vector in the uh, in expansion of renewable energy, particularly because we run out of space to uh, onshore uh, to develop wind farms, particularly in the areas where we need energy the most. But like in the United States, 60% of the offshore wind resource is in waters where the water depth is just too high to put a wind turbine on the seabed. And so that means that we need to look for new technologies where we can put a wind turbine on a floating platform. But that brings along new technology challenges. And so today, um, the floating platform technology uh, is designed separate from the wind turbine technology. And as a result, we get really large, bulky structures that are very costly. This is exactly what we're trying to uh, attack in our project, by simultaneously uh, design platform and wind turbine together with its controls. And what that helps to do is concurrently mitigating the impact of wind and waves on the turbine in such a way that we can reduce the amount of mass that the structure needs to withstand all of that loading. And the result of that is that we can take out all of that overdimensioning and create a wind turbine that ultimately could be uh, economically viable uh, and therefore make floating offshore wind a potential technology uh, that can be uh, a competing technology in the uh, whole mix of renewable energy in the future. Hey, uh, my name is John Hall. I'm a lead combustion engineer in thermal sciences at GE Research. So FlyClean stands for fuel cell embedded engine and it is essentially about uh, enabling future of uh, cleaner and sustainable flight using by integrating solid oxide fuel cell directly with a gas turbine engine. So as you could see here, so fuel cell is much more efficient than gas turbine, but it lacks kind of a power density compared to the gas turbine engine. So we're trying to leverage these two, so boosting system efficiency, but also at the same time uh, leveraging the high power density of the gas turbine. And in parallel, we are trying to increase the power density of the fuel cell itself. So that, that's kind of a one key uh, work task of the phase one. And the unique concept of this project is uh, we are trying to integrate the fuel cell in an unconventional way where we directly mount it on the combustor liner. So you can remove all the pressure vessel and additional piping and that re reduces a lot of cost. And so fuel cell has to be robust and high, high power dense. That's what we are working on. And also at the same time, we're trying to demonstrate this integration concept where you directly mount the fuel cell, which is not shown under the figure, but and operate the main combustor. So you burn the liquid fuel and the gaseous fuel through the fuel cell. And whatever is unused, you dump it into the combustor and burn it all together like axial fuel staging concept. So this is a very um, exciting journey for GE, uh, partnering with ARPA-E and demonstrating um, this concept, working on a building block for hybrid electric propulsion. And once successful, this can be applied to even power sector and aviation sector as Daniel mentioned yesterday.